Howdy, I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Tonight's recap is going to be pretty brief because we had a pretty brief meeting. Uh, a few things we touched on, all real discussion occurred in preliminary open meeting as we had no items for individual consideration. Uh, the first was uh, athletic field registration program. So we have 15 uh, sites with athletic fields around Plano. And uh, this was to review our reservation practices. Basically, uh, and this was a surprise to me, 96% of our reservations are um, set aside for leagues, um, like a PSA. Only 4% are set aside for public uh, reservation. Uh, now that might, public reservation might be um, practice days for a team, etc. But uh, we've asked to get uh, statistics on the uh, demand levels for the um, uh, fields uh, for leagues versus uh, uh, public rentals. And um, I think 4% percent is um, really a sliver in a pie chart. Uh, but we also discussed the need to rest fields um, so that the land doesn't get too worn out. Our Parks Department, uh, Parks and Recreation Department does a great job maintaining our fields. Um, across all 15 sites so that they are usable year after year. <clears throat> so that does mean resting them at times. So that leads to some frustration on the part of residents when they uh, try to make a reservation and they're told there are no fields available, but they see like a perfectly good field uh, right down the street that's not being used. That's because it's being rested. So we've inquired, um, I inquired about how we can uh, signal that, uh, very, to make it very obvious to residents that a field is being rested. Maybe it's off limits for the entire season. Um, <clears throat> whatever cost-effective way we can um, uh, achieve that. Now, uh, I discovered we had 28,000 hours of programmed activity on our fields in 2022. That is, of course, a ton. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, we are multi-purpose fields. Uh, actually support multiple sports um, at 11 out of our 15 sites. So uh, we also discussed um, uh, utilization in terms of making sure that when a field or a set of fields is reserved, say, by a league for practice in general, but they cancel practice. Does the field go unused? Is there a, a, a wait list system uh, where somebody can be notified that a field is available? Tuesdays and Thursdays are the hot nights uh, for field reservations, but if somebody's happy to take a uh, cancellation on a um, Sunday afternoon or a uh, Friday evening, um, then who cares? <clears throat> so we're going to look into the possibilities there. The next item of discussion was about our comments of public interest. <clears throat> now, uh, there were actually several elements relating to this. One is people dialing in by Zoom. This became a thing during the pandemic, um, when we, especially when we weren't even having council meetings in person. Um, so there was discussion about no longer allowing comments of public interest by Zoom. There was... Um, <clears throat> discussion about moving comments of public interest to a special meeting, um, not televised. Now, I think everybody understands this is because of uh, Alex Stein and a few others who have come at a few council meetings <clears throat> to um, uh, regale us with their routines. Uh, Stein was actually there tonight. Um, I don't know whether it was by coincidence or because this was on the agenda to, dis to discuss. <clears throat> uh, there was discussion about limiting um, uh, limiting discussion during comments of public interest to city business. Realistically, uh, if Alex Stein or anybody else wants to come and speak at city council meetings and we restrict it to city business, there's any number of things pertaining to the city they could pluck and uh, make up a routine about. I don't really think that's going to do anything. Anybody with a will is going to find uh, a way. Um, there was discussion about uh, restricting it to Plano residents, uh, maybe Plano residents and businesses. Uh, I pointed out that there are many legitimate stakeholders um, that uh, have an interest in what goes on in Plano uh, that are not residents here. Now, most of those would be businesses, but it's not even limited just to that. Um, and uh, the the, the part, I should say, part of the discussion about the comments of public interest being at a special meeting, 
<clears throat> is there is, do we do it every council meeting <clears throat> beforehand? Do we do it once a month? Um, the original proposal, we start our executive session at five o'clock <clears throat> on council meeting days. There is discussion about having the special meeting for comments of public interest at 4.30. Uh, I spoke against that, I think, for people who have legitimate things to say before the council. 4.30 is hard for a lot of folks. It's still in the classical workday and all sorts of things are happening at that time. Kids have to be picked up from school, dropped off in another activity, um, all sorts of stuff, especially I mean, for people with kids, I speak as somebody with three, um, that makes it difficult to get to a council meeting at that time. Uh, there was discussion about moving it to 5 or 5.30, possibly 6.30. That was uh, didn't really go anywhere. Um, long story short, there were a lot of nuances. There wasn't one clear-cut um, direction. And they're going to put together a program of what this might look like and bring it back to us. Um, I will say, <clears throat> for the record, and I said some of this on the dais as well, that, and Anthony, actually Anthony Riccadelli said that uh, regarding Zoom meetings, that we should be more accessible rather than less accessible, and I agree with that. Um, <clears throat> uh, I also think we should make it um, relatively easy for the people who do have legitimate business before council and legitimate things to say uh, before council to come um, without putting it at a time like, oops, I just not nudged the uh, tripod. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, without making it difficult at times like 4.30, etc. Um, and for whatever, for whatever distraction appearances by folks like Alex Stein might present, um, I think that's a, uh, something we can live with. Um, I think the value of providing comments of public interest, even though we're not legally required to, to our residents where they can come and speak and be heard by the captive audience of their city council is, uh, worth far more than avoiding the distractions and sometimes annoyances of uh, folks like Stein. So whatever we choose to do with it, I wanna make sure that people who have legitimate things to say to the city council uh, are not restrained from doing so. <clears throat> and we can put up with a little uh, stuff around the edges uh, if need be. Uh, we then moved on to a very brief discussion about granting the city manager um, additional authority re regarding procurement uh, related to supply chain issues. So we gave the city manager some additional authority in uh, the pandemic for certain situations. And uh, I think given uh, supply chain challenges, uh, procurement is more challenging now than I've ever seen it. And so it makes sense, I think, to give the city manager additional flexibility. Of course, everything has to be ratified but it makes sense to give the city manager additional flexibility to uh, make procurement decisions in what can be a, a fast moving landscape. <clears throat> An opportunity that we thought we may have had to procure something may suddenly evaporate like, well, hey, no, that shipping container is gonna be stuck at the port for another three months. We need to figure out something else and we might need to figure it out in a hurry. So uh, the last thing we discussed was the rainy day fund. <clears throat> so this was something I actually uh, proposed shortly after I was elected to create a rainy day fund and we seeded it um, <clears throat> with a little windfall <clears throat> at the time. And the restrictions we put on it, I'd argue aren't really restrictions. <clears throat> it's like if there's a budgetary uh, shortfall. Um, and the third restriction is any other, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, any other use that uh, the council determines for it and with a simple majority vote. Um, we got a vote on our appropriations anyway, so I wouldn't really consider that a restriction. So one of the things I wanted to do is put additional guardrails and requirements in order to use the funds there. Um, we just added additional funds to the rainy day fund last meeting, if I recall, last of the one before. Uh, so we're now up to about $5 million in the rainy day fund, which is great. <clears throat> but I wanted to um, make it so that if we're to have a simple majority vote, that that could only be for specific things, such as expenses in and pursuant to a declared disaster or emergency. Um, also, uh, court judgments. If we're hit with a, a big judgment, then that would be an acceptable pool of funds to draw it from once appeals have been exhausted. Um, 
and then I wanted to require a supermajority vote for any other use. However, I think a supermajority vote would be a good idea anyway. If there were a true disaster or emergency, shouldn't be hard to um, get a supermajority of the council to vote in favor of it. But I want to make sure that uh, there are appropriate guardrails so that it's not just considered found money, because it's not. Um, this was intended to be for a rainy day, for special circumstances, um, and not just additional money when we want more money, because government will always want more money. Don't ever forget it. So I said on dais that I was viewing this similar to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. There should be real good reasons for pulling petroleum out of the reserve because when the poop hits the fan and you really need it, you want there to be actual petroleum there. Um, so similarly, when uh, there's an actual rainy day and something bad happens and we need uh, an unexpected amount of money, um, we want the money to be there. So, uh, and I did, by the way, propose that um, the city manager be given uh, authority uh, up to a certain amount of money to um, spend money from the rainy day fund. Um, but uh, that uh, didn't seem to gain a lot of traction, or at least we didn't have a lot of discussion about it. But we do need to do some homework. Um, the city attorney is going to do some homework about the whether we can have a supermajority vote and under what circumstances. There might be provisions of the city charter that prohibit that, but hey, new idea for a charter amendment. So that's all I have for tonight. I guess this went a little longer than I anticipated, but I'm Shelby Williams with Plano City Council. Good night and God bless.